Binge the full week of The Ray Taylor Show ad-free over at InspiredDisorder.com slash plus. This is The Ray Taylor Show. Bull Bulls, an Indian horror film that came out in 2020. It is currently streaming on Netflix. I've been reviewing Indian films every week. And since it's October, I'm doing all horror movie reviews. It's a very month filled with horror movies and i'm trying to get into checking out as many indian horror films as possible uh and this movie is one of them uh and it's a fun movie i really did enjoy this movie not as much a horror movie necessarily it definitely has some horrific aspects to it it does have some like supernatural type of horror. It is it is a horror movie, but it's also very like very much kind of like a fantasy movie. Kind of like has a mystery to it. Also a bit of a drama. It, it touches on a few different genres, as it were, uh, while also being a horror movie uh, and a beautiful film as well. This is written and directed by Anvita Dutt. And uh, a movie that I, I really did enjoy. It is um, very similar to Stree. It is a horror movie where the fear, the horror aspects of it are the fear of a woman, supernatural woman coming back and killing men. So in Stree, it was a woman stealing. Stree was a, a, like a witch that would uh, steal men. Uh, in this movie, Bull Bull, it is a demon woman that comes and kills men. And uh, it, it, on that level, it doesn't, you know, it, it's, it, I guess it would be scary. I, I mean, they similar similarities between the two movies, uh, but definitely more of a fantasy movie. But very well shot, amazing, amazingly written, amazing uh, acting in this movie as well. And... You know this this uh, the fantasy aspect the the demon that they're talking about in this movie uh, flies her feet are twisted backwards she like dances on the tops of trees uh, very kind of like a fantasy type of a story and it's a story that is told between two kids this movie starts off with uh, this girl Bull Bull the main character of the movie uh, as a child she was married off to an older man uh, and she mistakenly thinks that she's being married off to this younger kid uh, who she kind of bonds with and they, he tells her these scary stories and uh, it's not till later that she finds out that she was actually married off to a much older man and she was a very young girl so that that kind of idea in itself is somewhat horrific considering that that was a reality uh, of people's lives at some point in time um not only in india but you know even even in the united states i mean there's still red states in america that i i believe make it okay for older men to marry younger women we are living in crazy times right now uh but it's kind of brutal when you find that out i mean she is there's like it starts off with like the ceremony very gorgeous and it's definitely a a movie that focuses on an aspect of india that is wealthy right that they live in lavish mansions and have tons of money and this girl is married off to this guy who's got tons of money and he's got an, a brother i don't know if it's like a twin brother but definitely around his same age that seems to have some mental illness also he like acts childish but also still somebody who is a predator t to this girl calls her doll kind of flirts with her for a bit and then shooed away his wife is brought in to take him away uh but the just the fact that she's married off to this older guy and then the young brother is the kid that she kind of bonds with and he tells her these stories about these demon women and they they grow up kind of telling these stories to each other and even when they get older they they co-author a book about these stories so it's it's this kind of friendship then bond that grows uh, throughout the story and also kind of a bit of a love story as well a bit 
So, it, you know, it starts off showing her as a child. She loved to climb trees. There's this scene where she's getting prepared to be married for the ceremony, and they're putting a toe ring on her, and she asks what the toe ring is for, and the woman says that it's, you know, it's to keep, it's to keep little girls to grow up into women to fly away. Uh, and then she says, well, it's actually just to control you. Uh, which is, you know, a very interesting aspect to the narrative, the overall narrative of the movie. Um, but also, you know, the movie being about control, and controlling women. Um, but also, you know, the horror aspects of it, you know, as the these men turn up murdered, turn up dead. In a time where it's common for any situation like that to be blamed on a the demon woman like every situation it's like the go-to explanation for anything that happens oh the demon woman did it but you see as the body count increases that these are all pretty horrible dudes and this movie will show you the horrors of of what it is what what women had to deal with and how horrible these men could be. So in all, I really love this movie. And it's a movie that, that makes you think... Like, it's a movie where you're questioning if it's based in, like... If this movie is grounded. Or if there is, like, a fantasy aspect to it. It's, it's like a question you're constantly asking yourself through the events of this movie. Where part of you is believing the grounded aspect of this movie where you can easily explain these things as one character being responsible for it but then also you can kind of see how maybe another character if it is more of a supernatural thing how that character could be responsible for it and both of these characters could easily be the reasoning the the explanation for why these men are, are turning up dead and why each of these characters would have motivation to do those killings which i found that interesting how it doesn't really until the end you don't know what kind of world we're living in and even the cinematography even the the different shots of this movie there's a lot of mist and smog and smoke in this movie that makes it very dreamlike all the shots at night are have this like red uh lighting to them so it's it's very very dreamlike so it's it's hard to know if this movie is taking place in like a grounded real world or if it is more of a fantasy which a lot of indian films tend to ride that line kind of going between feeling like a historical epic and something that is fantasy like uh bahubili uh is a great instance of something that feels like a, almost like a historical epic but then these fantasy type moments happen these flourishes happen within it and this one has those same kind of fantasy kind of dreamlike moments uh but they're still so well grounded that like you're constantly questioning what you're watching and questioning what what's potentially happening uh which i love the aesthetic of it i mean it's a gorgeous film um and all of it, even the brutality of it is, is filmed in a way that's, it's, you know, sadly beautiful. Um, but yeah, so, you know, this movie has a lot of damaging things. And I'm going to be spoiling this movie. So be warned. If I haven't spoiled, I, I don't think I've spoiled anything yet. But I will be talking about specifics of this movie uh, that I liked aspects of the movie that i just feel like i want to talk about uh so i will be spoiling this movie i would recommend it it is a great movie it's bull bull it's b-u-l-b-b-u-l it's on netflix uh, a great movie it's a it's a quick movie too but probably the shortest shortest indian film i've watched it's only an hour and 34 minutes uh it's great it, it's just it's like i even i love the long indian films the three plus hour indian films those are all great as well but you know they're still able to pack the punch in in just over 90 minutes and i i absolutely love that aspect of it um so spoilers and one of the reasons why spoilers because i want to mention that this movie i mean the horrific aspects of it is not only that 
the kind of child bride aspect of it. The fact that we're dealing with men that are clearly in like their 40s or 50s marrying children that are like, you know, in single digits. You know, they're not even 10 years old yet and they're bearing, being married off to like some wealthy guy. And the, the, the wealthy guy, his brother is clearly a, a predator to, to young girls as well. Whether he's mentally disturbed or not, still is a, a child predator himself. And also, so you're dealing with that kind of abuse. You're also dealing with just sexual abuse anyway, with like rape and things like that, that happen on later and just physical abuse too. Uh, how physical abuse happens to different female characters in this movie, some of which happen off screen where you're just hearing about it and some happen in kind of glorious slow motion, uh, which isn't necessarily glorious. But, I mean, it's, it's, it's like gorgeous. It's like devastatingly gorgeously shot. It, it, it like you, it's a visceral feeling when you see one of these characters just get comp like it's brutal and i'll talk about that when we get to it but you know and then it's also it's like clearly there's the 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 connection between uh satya who's the boy right and they grow up so most of this movie is them as adults where Satya is, is older now, he's come back, he studied abroad, he lived abroad, and he came, he's ca came back home uh, after her husband left, right? We don't know why he left, but he left, so she's in this, like, palace by herself, and the guy that she grew up with that was, like, her, she was bonded to, she thought she was married to, comes back, the one that she was had feelings for and that was the reason why her husband sent him away he comes back and you see that he comes back a different person and there's a moment where she even points that out where she realized that he's no different from all the other men because he comes back and he's trying to investigate he becomes like a Sherlock Holmes of things that are happening because these men start ending up dead and he's starting to investigate and he he thinks it's the doctor because the doctor Sue Deep, I think it's Sue Deep, right? I want to take a quick break from the show to let you all know that there is official merch for the Ray Taylor Show. Head on over to inspireddisorder.com. You can get t-shirts, different artwork available, different designs, all on high quality materials in all the sizes. There's also iPhone cases made of biodegradable material. That's right. This is not bad for the environment. This is good for the environment. So all of those designs that are available on t-shirts are also available on phone cases designed by me, sold by me. Head on over to inspireddisorder.com to support the Ray Taylor show and promote it out in the world so all of the people in your life can see that you are a fan of the Ray Taylor show. Now, let's get back to that very show right now. The doctor is aware of things that are going on. There's a scene where he's talking about this the wife of some other wealthy family and how she had been she quote unquote fell down the stairs. And how that's just kind of the go-to saying for these wealthy families to not take responsibility for the fact that he beats her, right? So the doctor's seeing the reality of all these situations. And Satya, uh, Satya start, starts thinking that it is the doctor who is committing these crimes, right? Because he's the one that knows about them all. And he also is one because he not only knows, but he also values life. Being a doctor, just seeing how inhuman, how, how barbaric these men are to these women. You know, it's clear that he wants to protect them because he's constantly healing them and he has compassion for them. But then, so he's kind of like, he's the guy that's, yes, yeah, Sudeep. He is the guy who is suspected and so much of this movie you're like is it him like it could be him but also you're thinking like maybe there is this demon woman because it kind of hints to that a lot of the things that happen at night with all the mist and the smoke you're like maybe it is 
maybe there is this demon woman who has twisted feet and flies through the trees and kills these men and even after like there's the the victims start piling up like there's the first victim is um the man who the old man who the her husband's brother who's messed up in the head called her doll when she was a young kid and was trying to do some stuff with her and then later on uh he ends up dead right so he's the first victim where they they suspect it's the demon woman that killed him right so she's dealing with throughout this movie her sister-in-law is kind of mourning his death she shaved her head and she prays all the time she wears plain clothes and she assumes the d- the demon woman is the the one responsible and that's where they're talking about oh anytime something happens it's the demon woman so he's the one first that starts off dead then the second victim is uh this other master who when we hear the doctor talking about with uh Bubu about his wife falling down the stairs so he finally you know it's it's these men that have abused women right then there's another victim who the person the witness was a young girl so you know it's all these men that are clearly so you can see that it could be the doctor but you could also see that maybe there is this demon woman so it's like you know constantly making you question who it is and you know the doctor knows what's really going on so it's it's super easy to suspect him which that's what satya does and then you finally see see what happened to bulbul's husband you see why he left you see why he sent satya away because they're older they want to write this book together and her husband sees them bond he sees the bond they have which he doesn't like obviously because they are of the same age and it would be an appropriate thing for them but of course he is the older uh disgusting human so he decides to send satya away to school to study so it's like a good thing for him and even though there's months for him to to before he actually goes he decides to travel with him to go quote unquote take care of everything but it's just for him to to separate the two of them to separate bull bull from Sat- satya and then when he comes back the beating that he does puts on her right like he he sends him away he sends basically the love of her life away and still jealous still an awful person decides to take it even farther and to beat her and it's like this slow motion scene of like him with a metal rod because he sees she she goes to destroy the evidence of their right she's like done with it he left she's trying to wipe him from her memory and she burns the book that they wrote together but one of the pages didn't burn in the in the fireplace and her husband sees it so then he knows that's like confirmation that they were linked more than he suspected he already suspected so he takes the fire poker and just beats like brutalizes her feet it is like first i don't know you know while watching it i wasn't sure what he was beating right it could have been anything it was clearly her but like what part of her like i thought maybe it was her you know the baby making section could have easily been right is horrific whatever it was but you find out it was her feet that he was like destroying her feet right destroys her feet and then he leaves he's like i'm i'll send money but i'm i'm out so now she's taken care of by the doctor right who knows what's going on knows that obviously they use the same excuse fell down the stairs knows that it was bullshit that he did this to her feet he bandages her up and then you see like it's just adding insult to injury just piling on the trauma while she's just bandaged up starting her recovery from this horrific thing that happened to her from her husband then his brother comes in while she's sedated and like incapacitated in this bed 
and then he then she gets raped by her 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 uh brother-in-law right which is just brutal on top of that and of course his wife knows the sister-in-law who later like shaves her head she knows and she's trying to cover it up like there's a scene where she's like constantly going back and forth about oh it's so great you're gonna have all this money and you're like you're you're living in in wealth now so it's like you have to put up with some stuff like it's horrific how she kind of just tries to justify the treatment which i guess you would kind of have to on some level justify and like kind of maybe not justify but to find a way to step outside of yourself knowing that that's the reality of these women in this situation that you have to step outside of yourself and and kind of just to survive mentally have to kind of find justification in it um in some ways similar to um the that movie i saw i'm I'm blanking on the name um of the prostitute the biopic on the prostitute indian film great film uh kathy awadi i forget the first name bangu bangu by kathy awadi i forget um where she kind of had to separate herself she created a new identity and it's it's similar in some ways to that where you have to kind of separate yourself from the abuse and the trauma in order to just survive and it's kind of just it's demoralizing in a lot of ways for how her sister kind of just doesn't acknowledge the fact that she's married to a guy that's like just this disgusting person that this family is just these these horrific people right that's the real horror in this movie are the men right the fact that they get killed is the only justice right those are those are good mo- those are like when good things happen right so it's like watching this movie i'm like glad that there is either the doctor or this demon woman killing these guys because the horror is the men in these situations Let's take a little break from the show to promote I have Inspired Disorder Plus. Would you feel good about donating $5 a month to an artist that you want to support? $5 a month is not much. Less than a price of a cup of coffee at Starbucks. A lot of people would probably say, yeah, Inspired Disorder Plus, people can go. And for $5 a month or $50 for the year, you get access to all of the old podcasts that I've ever done, like 10 different podcasts hundreds of podcast episodes you also get access to like special deals so if you do want to collect my artwork you get discounts on stuff watch this show binge the full week ad free for five dollars a month like you get benefits for the five dollars a month or fifty dollars a year so it's not like you're just donating five dollars there's something you get something for that would you feel good about donating five dollars a month to an artist that you want to support a lot of people would probably say yeah head on over to inspireddisorder.com slash plus and become an Inspired Disorder Plus member today. And now let's get back to the show. So you see, then the doctor sees that not only did she just get her feet bashed by her husband, but she also got raped by her husband's brother, her brother-in-law, right? So another justification for why this doctor would know that one that would be the first victim that guy like you could see the doctor going to kill that guy right to seek revenge for her because he cares about her not not necessarily a romantic way but just in a human way the doctor cares about her then you would make sense that the second victim would be this other master this master dinker who's a wife beater having him be the second victim than having um, the fourth victim or maybe the third victim be an older guy who had a young girl in there. But you also see that Bull Bull doesn't, like, even though she's in these situations, she doesn't care about wealth, right? All the things that her sister's trying to justify why 
staying in this situation is okay why receiving this kind of abuse is okay having having this wealth and having like people of town look up to you as somebody who's wealthy like she doesn't care about any of those things so when her sister's trying to use those things as justification they don't they don't mean anything to her but i love so there's kind of this point where satya is convinced as the doctor he's taking the doctor to go stand trial or whatever and their carriage stops like the the driver gets killed and he goes off to hunt which he's done before in this movie satya goes out to hunt this demon woman right and sees her shadow in the mist and shoots at her of course doesn't kill her but there's this great thing where it all comes together in this movie where you find out that the demon woman is real you find out that the demon woman is bulbul and that her twisted feet came from the fact that her feet healed in a certain way after her husband destroyed them how she's able to effortlessly bend them around right and she's grew up climbing in trees so it's kind of fantasy in a way but also in some ways trying to ground it like this explains the feet thing this explains why she people think she just floats through the trees because she grew up climbing in the trees and playing in the trees and there's this just kind of and these fires start so when you see the clarity that it's not the doctor, that it's, it's actually Bull Bull and that she is the demon woman, there's also the, the moment where Satya realizes what he's done, that he has potentially killed. Not he, where he realizes the demon woman is Bull Bull, right? The woman he loves. That he is like every other man who she said he was. You know, on the side of the abusers, Satya was trying to put the doctor away, thinking it was the doctor and thinking that he had done anything wrong. Right. He is the one. He's, it's vigilante justice, but it's justice. None the same. All these abusers are are getting their their sentence. You know, they're they're getting killed. But the moment where he realizes what he's done, it's just like it's it's cathartic in a way of like, yeah, you you did turn into everything that she, she was right. It's just, it, it's a, that whole moment where everything gets answered and comes together was so powerful. I really, I really did enjoy that. And you see how like it, it takes you through how she went through. She would bite their necks open to make them bleed out and, you know, showing all the different men, like watching the movie. I thought it was her. But they did such a good job of, of making that doctor just as culpable, like just as potentially the, the person who's doing it. But then realizing when it is her, it's great. You know, it's, it's so great. Just the end is so beautiful. And the very end of it where like her husband comes back to town and it's all overgrown. Everybody left. Right. Right. Because it's just like, you know, it's a, nobody wanted to live there anymore. After what happened, everything burned, all this shit. It's just a horrible, it's just like a house where tragedy happened. All of these tragic things happened. So they all leave and he comes back and it's all overgrown. You know, and he's got the letter from Satya who's, you know, telling him what he, you know, telling him what happened. And then seeing the kind of the moment where the movie turns into like supernatural where everything else even like with the turned feet and all that stuff was still based in reality and on some level her floating through the trees it's just her ability to climb really well but the very end where it's supernatural and she kind of materializes in front of him is pretty great like it made me excited for another movie right S this being the 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 prequel this being the origin story for this demon woman who i don't think she had a name like stree 
from that the other movie. Um, like her name was Bull Bull, but you know the 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 thing, the demon woman everybody was scared of didn't have a name. They just called her Demon Woman. So if this were a setup to a sequel, I'd be stoked, right? I I love that, and it's it's like there's a lot of horror movies where the the monster in the movie are killing bad people, right? It's like the movie Sleepaway Camp. Aside from the very end of the movie, like all of the people in that movie are like child predators that get killed. So it's like you're rooting for the bad, quote unquote, bad guy in the movie. You're rooting for the monster. In this movie, you're rooting for these guys to get killed, right? I don't have any compassion for the fact that you know, her brother-in-law got killed knowing what he tried to do when she was a kid, knowing what he did when she was you know, an adult injured in bed trying to heal, knowing what the other guy did, these other men. It's like it's like all like it's all justified, in my opinion, you know, which I enjoy those horror movies. Right. It's like it's almost like a superhero movie in a way. Right. Vigilante justice doing good, righting wrongs. In a way, I liked it. I really did enjoy it. The aesthetic of it's great. The story's great. Uh, and I hope it's the beginning of a franchise. I mean, Indian, there's a lot of franchises in Indian films I'm seeing. Like, they love doing the sequels. So, maybe not as many, but they, and they're so good, too. So, if there is a Bull Bull 2, I would be excited to watch it, for sure. Uh, but I check it out this Halloween, this ho- October. Check out Bull Bull on Netflix. New episodes of The Ray Taylor Show come out every single day. Subscribe on YouTube and everywhere our podcasts are found. Binge the full week over at InspiredDisorder.com slash plus. Buy Ray Taylor Show merch over at InspiredDisorder.com. And follow the show on Instagram at Ray Taylor Show. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Peace. Out! Today is the day where you wake up and you realize that everything that you've been dreaming about, everything that you've been wanting, every goal and wish and hope that you've ever had can become real. Dreams can come true. What you manifest in your mind, you can bring to reality.